Why should there be so much poverty in America when you have so much wealth? Why shouldn't United States try to improve yourself in re-educating workers when the society's economic basis changed? Why can't the US government do some of these things that the Chinese government is doing? The final question for uh, Mr. Islam. As you are experienced diplomat, you have been to over 50 countries, and most of the developing countries. So uh, what's your impression of the issue of inequality uh, in addition to your country, Bangladesh, or about other countries? Is this a very serious issue? Thank you, Professor. Actually, I have served uh, in Europe and Middle East, and I have traveled around the world. Uh, in Europe, I uh, feel that there is a redistribution system. In the name of social service, uh, there is guarantee of minimum uh, minimum uh, uh, income. Uh, if, they, if somebody does not have a job, they get uh, some, uh, some uh, money from the uh, social security system. So that is how uh, the inequality in Europe is um, more tolerable. It is uh, like the Guinea coefficient is like 0.3 on, 0 .3 on to 0 0.35, which is very much tolerable. And it is similar to my country. Bangladesh is, uh, is leading in terms of equality, the South Asia, and also uh, the, uh, the women empowerment social system is the most progressive in South Asia. Uh, uh, in Middle East, uh, some countries are, are like Saudi Arabia, the inequality is very high because of some people have a lot of uh, uh, resources uh, from the fossil fuel. Uh, but in general, people have the income source. And uh, for America, inequality is high, but still they have, uh, they have opportunity. The country is uh, as big as, as China, a little bit maybe similar size, uh, and, uh, but the population is less. So the people have the uh, opportunity of getting employment. But China has really, although the inequality is very high in China, but it, uh, China has done a spectacular job, more than 80 million people bringing up from the poverty line. Everybody has a uh, minimum source of income. This is not a matter of joke. China did not occupy other country, did not uh, gra grab the proper uh, resources from other country. It did by itself. And it is an inspiration for the countries, developing countries uh, like Bangladesh or other countries. That's why I came to China to learn from China. Uh, and the stable government and uh, certainty, these are the things. And, uh, uh, and there is a lot of things to learn from China, how China brought up brought the people. And now it is the uh, proper moment to minimize the gap uh, between the very rich and uh, rich region and the less uh, rich region. And also there is opportunity, like this high, uh, high speed train. China has the largest 60,000 kilometers of high speed rail in China. This is the largest in the whole world. So in that way, the industry will be spread in the villages. That's how the gap between the villages, between the township and the other regions will be minimized. Uh, and also this green growth. So all these things, it's, it's another historic moment for China and right policy. China has almost always followed the right policy. That's how the country has become uh, so developed now. Okay, I have traveled 53 countries. I can compare China with any developed countries like in terms of infrastructure. So all these things, China has come up from the level of Bangladesh when it was very poor in 1971. And now this level of development, it's really spectacular. So although the, the inequality is very high, but the peop, there is no people below the absolute poverty line. So that is, uh, I, it is also very inspiring for us. We are learning from China. Thank you, Professor. Ri Dario, uh, who is also a venture capitalist, and uh, well known in the uh, in the Chinese uh, society as well. He made a lot of comments on China and the United States. Uh, recently, he said the United States should also embrace common prosperity. <laughs> What's your take on that kind of uh, suggestion or proposal? Ray has been a close follower of China since his first visit, I think it was about 34, 35 years ago. And uh, Bridgewater has always been positive about China's economic growth. I think what he said about how the U.S. should take a, take a bite or take a learning from China's um, common prosperity is referring exactly to what I was talking about before. 
because he talked about also why should there be so much poverty in America when you have so much wealth? Why should there be, even though the elite universities are in America, but the second tier, third tier education system is really poor? Why shouldn't United States try to improve yourself in re-educating workers when the society's economic basis changed? Why can't the U.S. government do some of these things that the Chinese government is doing to improve society as a whole? I think that was on the Bloomberg interview, and it, it was spectacular, but he was attacked by many because of it. I think one of the things we should look at is U.S. politicians are spewing basically garbage about China. It's all vilification. U.S. politicians and the ignorant and the Western media are vilifying China. But Wall Street, especially the more sophisticated ones on Wall Street, are certainly taking a different view on China. And they're continuing to follow China's and the investment opportunities closely. And Ray, Ray Dalio is one of them. But look at who else? Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan Chase. And all the other major banks. HSBC just bought out their partner in the brokerage firm to be wholly owned in China. All of them are actively continuing to pursue the Chinese market. Mm -hmm.